Hello folks, it's Professor Fiore again, and we're going to pick up with our embedded C programming. Today we're going to look at integer divides, modulos, and bitwise operators. So the first thing I want to grab here is looking at the integer divide and modulo. So let's suppose we have a couple of variables. Right, I'm just going to say that we have like A, B, and C. Now, do a little calculation here, right? A divided by B is going to get a C. What are the values of A and B? Well, suppose we just set them to like 2 and 3. Okay. So what we're saying here is C gets 2 divided by 3. 2 thirds, right? Except it's an integer, so there is no fractional part. And what we actually get is 0. Oops. All right. This actually works out to your advantage in some cases. It's the whole number of times B goes into A. There are a lot of applications for this, as we'll see. The other thing, similarly, would be a mod b. So the modulo gives us the remainder. Again, if I suppose, um, you know, 2 and 3, right? So we say 2 mod 3. The remainder here is 2, right? 3 goes into 2 no times with two left over. Now, this can sometimes do some interesting things. Consider the following line of C code, right? Let's, let's suppose you have, again, I'll just stick with A, B, and C, but let's say you do it as like a built up division. Like I'm gonna say A plus B added together divided by C, and I'll assign this to some variable like D. Now compare that to this, which, you know, mathematically should be the same, right? A divided by C plus B divided by C. It actually makes a difference. If we said that uh, A is, let's say, 2, and B is 3, and C is 4, you get two different results. All right. In the first case, right here, A plus B, 2 plus 3 is 5, divided by C, 4. 5 divided by 4, an integer divide, that's 1. But if you do it this way, it's... 2 divided by 3, integer divide, that's 0. And then it's 3 divided by 4, another integer divide, which is also 0. So you get 0 plus 0 is 0. So you do it this way, you get 1. You do it this way, you get 0. It actually makes a difference when you do an integer divide. All right, so just keep that in mind. If you don't want to lose precision and you're doing something like this, generally speaking, you want to uh, do that addition first and then divide. Don't split it out. Like, so you're going to lose resolution on that. Okay. All right. Next thing. Bitwise. What can we do bitwise? So we're literally talking about comparing one bit to the next bit between two values. You know, I got variables A and B, X and Y, whatever. So what can we do here? Well, we have a bitwise OR, and the operator for that is uh, sort of a vertical bar. We have a bitwise AND. The operator for that is an ampersand. And don't let it bother you that we also use an ampersand for address, right, when we were looking at scanf, because that's a unitary application. This is a uh, an operator between two variables. So the compiler understands by context which is which. All right. 
exclusive or. So that uses the caret. Then we have a bitwise complement. Oh, that's a lovely operator you have there. How's that for a complement? So we use tilde for that. And then we have bit shifting. So we can shift left, we can shift right. So that's a, that's a left shift. And we have a right shift. In other words, all the bits get rotated left or right. Okay, so some examples. Um, let's say that we have two variables. A, we'll say that's hex F3. Okay, and another variable, another int B. And I'm just going to look at my characters on this. 8 bits. So that'll be uh, 89. So I want to do these things to it. So I say, all right, um, what is the result of a bitwise word with b? And how do I do that? Well, what we're going to do is take these values and write them in binary. Now, what is f3? Well, each one of these digits turns into a nibble, right? It's a four bit value. So an F is four ones, right? And a three is zero, zero, one, one. Okay, beautiful. Now, what's B? All right, so B is an 89. So that's going to be first nibble is one, three zeros, and then a nine, which is one, zero, zero, one. So now we just literally go down bitwise or these things together. Okay, one or one is one, one or zero is one, 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 a zero and one is one, zero and, oops, zero and zero, uh, zero or zero is zero, one, one. So what is that equivalent to? Right, that's equivalent to an F, B, All right? I want to be nice about it. All right, so that's our hex value. So it's literally bitwise, right? One bit by an X. So if we anded these things together, keep keeping the same values. All right, so we've got this. For the uh, first guy. And now and them, right? So one and one is one. One and zero is going to be zero. Zero and zero. Another zero. Another zero. Another zero. And a one. So what's that equal to? Or equivalent to? Well, and hex, that's 81. And we can just continue on with this, right? So if we did... Um, I'll leave these as an exercise. All right, you can check these out. So remember an XOR, you're basically saying, look, if the two things are the uh, the same, right? If you get a one one or a zero zero, then you're gonna get a zero. If you have one of each, a one zero or zero one, then you know you, you get the opposite case. So here, um, I'm not going to repeat this, but just looking at these, right? You got a one one, so that's going to get you a zero. And then in the other cases, you have one zero one zero one zero, so that's going to be one one one, All right? And then we have a zero one that gets us a one, a double zero, All right? And then we have a one zero and a one one, All right? So that's Again, the same, so that turns into a zero. And we wind up with 7a. OK. All right. One's complement. All right, the complement tilde. So if you did um, you know, tilde a, what does that work out to? We'll just flip all the bits. All right, so if a is one 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 zero zero one one then that's just going to flip to all zeros one one zero zero all right 
So one, 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 and a zero, zero, one, one. So far, so good. So far, so good. Okay. Same thing with, you know, if you did a comp on uh, on B, the same thing, would it would flip. Okay. Left shift, right shift. That's kind of an interesting one. So you would say something like, you know, X is going to get A shifted one place. So basically, all of this gets just pushed over one. So what ends up happening over here, oops, let's do it like this. So the, um, the leading one, this leading one gets pushed out and that leaves us with these three ones and this zero in the top nibble. Then this zero one one gets pushed over and then it gets zero filled at the bottom end. So this is what you end up with. Now, if this was a character, an 8-bit value, this bit would be lost. Right, that gone, that's history. Of course, if this is a, uh, a short or a long, then this is retained. Right, it goes up into the next uh, digit, next hex digit. So looking at this, if it's a, a byte value only, you just see these two guys, that's going to get you an E6. If it's, uh, as I said, a, um, you know, a long or something like that, then it would be 1E6. And lastly, we could shift B the other way. So I'm just going to grab B just for fun. So, you know, we would take this value. This 1 is going to get shifted off. That's history. So the bottom nibble is going to be the 0010. And then you're going to have... Uh, a zero fill on this end. So what you're going to wind up with, there's your zero fill coming in, right? And then you've got the one with the zeros after it. Here's the last zero that you had. And then the one zero zero coming in off after that. So that's your final value, right? So that's hex 44. Okay, we use this stuff a lot. I know it might look a little arcane, but it turns out that uh, uh, sort of fiddling with bits like this is extremely useful. For example, we have something called a data direction register in our microcontroller so that we can control whether a port is input or output. So, you know, we would typically have these things set for input if, if the data direction register is a zero, if that bit is a zero, if the bit is a one, then it's set for output mode. So I have a bi-directional port that can either be used as input or output, depending on how I program it. Or I might want to write to that output port, in which case, um, you know, I need to set a one in a particular bit or a zero in a particular bit. And I can, you know, set up values like this. I can see what's coming in on an input input port um, by masking out various bits. Like I only want to see, for example, if one of the two bottom bits is is set. So what do I do? I take this whole thing. Um, I can end it with a mask. So the mask would be all zeros up to here, and then a one one like this, right? All zeros, and then zero zero one one and the value with it, and what ends up happening? Well, it rips off these top six bits, and only bits zero and one are left. Then I can just do a check on that, as we'll see, to see if you know, one of them, at least one of them, happens to be set, happens to be one. So we use these a lot, and it's useful to uh, you know, gain facility, the bitwise operators. All of these we're going to use a lot. So, you know, let's just take a look at a, a quick little example here, starting with our integer uh, divide and so forth. So I wrote up this little program. OK. 
Okay, so here's our, I'm doing an integer divide and then I'm doing an, a mod. So you can see I've got a 13 and a 3. So 13 divided by 3, integer, 3 goes into 13, right, 4 times. There's our 4. With one, le one left over, that's our mod. Okay. All right. Oh. So we can just experiment with that, right? Play around with this. I have another program for you down here. All right, so this is basically doing what um, I was just talking about in the second part. Now, I've got a bunch of variables over here. We're going to use our printf as a little uh, prompt. Scanf, notice I'm using a percent %x here, so you can put values in in hex. So we're going to ask for two characters, and then we just do a string of things. We bitwise or, bitwise and, exclusive or, complement the, the two variables. Then we do a, a one-bit shift either way. Of course, you could shift by two, three, five, you know, whatever. And then I just have one big uh, printout over here for everybody. All right, so let's just run this. And let's use some of the values that uh, I, I did on the first shot. Now, you can either enter these in as uh, 0x or just the value, you know, like this. Scanf is smart enough when you use percent %x that it'll, it'll accept it either way. The other value we used was uh, 89. So here's our values, right? So there's the, the O-ring. FB that we calculated, the 81 for the AND, 7A for the exclusive OR. Uh, now, th these complements, since I declared these as ints, right, they have um, four bytes. So those leading zeros all turned into one. So that's why we see FFFFF up front, okay, on both of these. And because we do have the extra top bytes, that one bit that we did on the left shift does show up. So instead of getting just E6, we get one E6. And finally, there's the 44 that we wound up um, with our uh, right shift. Okay, so you might find this useful just to enter on your own as a little tool to, you know, check, right? A little homework action here. You can just think of different values calculate them manually, and then go in and, um, you know, run the program, see if you got the right results. Okay? Handy little stuff. All right. Next time around, we are going to start looking at conditionals, right? How we can do branching in our C programs. See you then.